Good evening, parents. Welcome to the Sacrament of Reconciliation class. As we realize during this time, it's a little bit difficult to do things as we normally have done. And so we thought that a good way to help prepare your child for the Sacrament of Reconciliation would, would be to do a brief video in which we can help you teach them. And this way, you'll be able to answer some of their questions, and they'll be able to raise other questions um, in their classrooms, which would um, help you and them as well. So we'll begin our class with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. St. Patrick, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we begin this lesson on reconciliation, I think it might be good for us just to speak about the sacraments in general, and then, in the, then we'll get into reconciliation in particular. As you know from your own catechetical experience, there are seven sacraments. And the sacraments are defined as an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. When we say that the sacraments are outward, it means it's something visible. For example, you could see me pour water at the sacrament of holy baptism. Then we say that they are a sign. Well, a sign speaks to us about something that's taking place. For example, if you're driving through town, you come through to that red eight-sided sign with the four white letters, it tells you to stop. And so a sign speaks to us about something that causes us to react in some way. Now, when we say the sacraments are instituted, it means that they've been established by the Lord himself, Christ, who is the Savior of the world, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. And all sacraments give us grace. Grace is given to us by God so that we can enter into a relationship with him, share in his life. Grace is given to us to help us to do good, avoid evil, resist temptation, and to work in the best ways that we can with the gifts and talents that we have been given. In the sacraments, we always receive sacramental grace, which is the grace that helps us to live out the purpose of the sacrament that we have received. Sanctifying grace is the grace that God just freely gives to us out of his love for us. Then actual grace is the grace that we earn in our life through the practice of doing good, following the virtues. And now our seven sacraments are divided into three uh, different categories. The first category is the sacrament of initiation. And by initiation, it means we are brought in or bound to, to God and bound to his church. The first sacrament of initiation is baptism, in which we are incorporated into the church, we have our original sin taken away, and we become, become part of the communion of saints. The second sacrament of initiation is the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which comes to us through the sacrifice of the Mass. We'll be having a video on this sacrament later on in your child's preparation for that sacrament in the spring. The third sacrament of initiation is the sacrament of confirmation, in which the Holy Spirit comes to us and we are given those seven gifts to help us to know God's will and to do God's will, those, those gifts that call us into relationship by using our gifts and talents to help our better ourselves as a follower of Christ and as a good human being. The second sex, uh, section of sacraments are the sacraments of um, healing. And those sacraments are the sacrament of reconciliation, which we'll be talking about soon. And then also we will be speaking about the sacrament the sacrament of anointing of the sick. Anointing of the sick is the sacrament in which we enter into a relationship with God 
during those critical times of our life uh, in which we need the help of God in our journey, in our human frailty, and in our illness. The final set of sacraments are the sacraments of vocation. The word vocation means to call, and these are the calling sacraments, which would be holy matrimony and then holy orders, deacon, priest, and bishop. So that's a brief summary of the seven sacraments and how they're celebrated in our life as we move forth in our relationship to God and his church. For the sacrament of reconciliation, what we're doing is celebrating the Lord's tremendous love and mercy for us. And in that love and mercy, he always calls us into friendship with him. And we share that gift of reconciliation um, through the sacrament in which we receive absolution, forgiveness of our sin, a penance, and then the ability to move forward, to let that sin be in our past and to be able to move forward. A sin may very well be defined as a failure to love, or in another way, when we take our minds and hearts and souls away from God and turn them in upon ourselves. One image that I'd like to share with you today that speaks about reconciliation as the image of that in the picture that you see before you, and it is our Lord pulling uh, St. Peter up out of the Galilean Sea. There was a tremendous storm, and the boat was rocking, and the, the apostles had seen St. Peter walking upon the water, and Peter had said, Lord, if it's really you, let me come to you. And so Jesus says to Peter, come. And so Peter gets out of the boat, he's rather scared, but he gets out and he begins to walk. And as he's beginning to walk, he has his eyes fixed on Jesus and he's able to walk and follow towards Jesus. But all of a sudden, he looks away and he looks down. And once he turns his, his gaze from the Lord, he begins to sink. And as he begins to sink, he, he screams out in a loud voice, Lord, save me. And the Lord comes over to Peter and he reaches down towards Peter to pull him up out of the water. But if you notice in the picture, Peter also has to reach towards the Lord. And so we see in the sacrament of reconciliation, it is about us reaching towards God and God reaching towards us. And as the Lord picks Peter up out of the water, he embraces him. He doesn't say, Peter, you fool. He doesn't say, Peter, why did you do this? He just brings Peter up out of the water and he br brings him to safety and it is that aspect of reconciliation that we should be celebrating with our children another great image that i have for reconciliation is you know after um, the lord had been risen from the dead and he began to journey about he didn't see all of the apostles and the gospel of john speaks to this incident that takes place Peter, who goes about back to his fishing um, and, you know, just has lost the sense of what the Lord was calling him to, goes back to fishing. Now, remember, prior to the Lord's crucifixion, Peter had denied Jesus three times. And so all of a sudden, as these apostles are back fishing, they see Jesus up on the cliffs and they yell, it's the Lord. And the first thing that Peter does is he jumps off the boat and he hides. He's afraid. He's afraid that the Lord's going to yell at him. He's afraid that the Lord is going to be angry at him because of these denials. And so he hides behind the boat. And he begins to look around, see that the coast is clear, doesn't see Jesus. So he figures he can come out of the water. And he comes out of the water, he meets Jesus on the seashore, and the Lord looks at him, and now Peter's anxious, he's upset, he doesn't know what to do, and we know that type of situation because when we're uncomfortable with situations, we tend to put our hands in our pockets, and we shuffle our feet, and we look down to the ground. So if you imagine this relationship between Peter and, and Jesus taking place, we see that they encounter each other and Jesus is looking towards Peter, but Peter's not really looking towards Jesus. He's looking away. 
And so Peter begins to say really nothing. And so the Lord says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter looks up kind of startled, not knowing really what to say, because he figures that the Lord's gonna yell at him or, or, or you know, or push him to the side for having denied. And Jesus just asks a simple question, do you love me? And all of a sudden, you know, Peter responds, well, yes, I do. And then after that, the Lord asks a second time, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then finally, the Lord asks the third time, and now Peter gets it. He sees what's happening. And at that third time, Peter responds to the Lord, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. Now, each response to those I love yous, the Lord had said to Peter, feed my sheep. He didn't yell at Peter, he didn't push him aside, he didn't say that you're no good, that you messed up. He just says, feed my sheep. And so as he's saying, feed my sheep to, the, to St. Peter, it's a way of the Lord saying to Peter, look, yes, you messed up, but we have something still important to do. We have something greater to do. So we need to move beyond this and move forward in your relationship with me, but also in your relationship to the church. And so these are two great stories about reconciliation in which the Lord encounters a, an apostle that has strayed, that, that didn't get it right, but he takes him back. He brings him back in and he gives him ministry. He gives him, he's entrusting Peter with the ministry of the church. And so now as we see these images of reconciliation, I'd like to think for you to think about those times in church. You know, I love my seat up in the sanctuary because I can see everything that goes on. And my favorite thing is when your children start to squirm, everybody always wants to know, why do I smile when they're up there? Well, the reality is I'm watching what takes place between you and your children. And you know, as the children get a little rambunctious and you begin to grit your teeth and talk to them through grit teeth and you're trying to get them to behave and they're getting a little bit worse, then all of a sudden, you know, you do that little pinch thing that you think nobody's looking and then all of a sudden the tears come. Well, once it happens, the child is really trying to get back into your lap because they're looking to, to make amends. They're looking for a sense of security. And see, this is a great image of reconciliation as well because when we go to the sacrament of reconciliation, we're actually encountering the Lord. We're climbing into his lap and we're telling him that we're sorry and that we need his grace and his strength in our life so that we can move on and better ourselves. These images of reconciliation are the images that we also need to be teaching our children because they will give them a better sense of what's going to happen to them. I remember back in the day when I was making my first confession many years ago, um, we, it wasn't as, as elaborate as things are today. We were marched into church, we lined up against the walls, and then we were just brought into the confessional side by side, booth by booth. And I remember I was so nervous, I kind of grabbed the wall and I didn't want to move. And all of a sudden, Sister Kevin grabbed me and pulled me. I think there are still the claw marks in the wall uh, in the church um, at, from that moment in time. And I got to get put in the booth and I'm kneeling there nervously and I'm waiting for that door to slide open. I'm not sure what to do. And it was a pretty kind of scary moment. And remember back then the confessionals didn't have lights. Um, uh, they were kind of uh, very dark and a little scary at times. Today, when you come to visit the parish and look at the confessionals, you can actually see one over my shoulder right now. You'll see that there are lights on in the confessionals and it's, it's not dark, it's, it's a brighter place, it's not as scary. And the children can be comfortable as they go into the confessional or the, uh, the reconciliation booth. And at that moment, 
there is that encounter, just like Peter encountered the Lord as, the, as your child encounters the priest in, in reconciliation, and there is that moment in which there is that greeting, and confession always begins as it always has. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession, and these are my sins. Now, when we speak to the children, we always tell them to worry about just their sins, not their brothers, not their sisters, not what you do, or anything like that. And so we try to explain it's not a time for tales, it's not a time for stories, it's just a time about telling God that you're sorry for your sin. Then your child will tell the priest this is all he can remember. The priest will offer some words of advice and encouragement and give them a penance. Now you receive a penance for three reasons to show that you're sorry, to make up for your sin, and you're going to try to do better. Now a penance can be one of three things. It can be a prayer, Hail Mary, our Father. It could be go home and do something good around the house. Or it could be a give up, maybe no Xbox for an hour, or maybe, you know, um, you have to like clean the table, or, you know, no dessert. So there's different types of penances. But all penances are there to help a person understand what they've done wrong and through that penance begin to better their life in some way. Remember, a sin is always when one turns their mind and heart away from God. And a big distinction that you have to have with your child is what is a mistake or accident and what is done on purpose. You'll hear me speak to the children at different points in times about this. An accident is if you're at the dinner table and they reach across the table and they knock over the pitcher of milk. Well, that's an accident. But if they're at the table and they pick up the dinner roll and throw it across the room and fire it at their brother or sister, that's something that's done on purpose. So there has to be a good understanding of what is a sin. A sin has to be something that is either done or not done on purpose, what one should have done or should not have done and begin to have an understanding of why that was wrong. This is why God gives us a conscience. And as we work with the children in second grade, we work on this conscience development. And that is the understanding of what's right, what's wrong, what one should do, what one shouldn't do. And you'll be surprised along the way how much a child at the age of seven or eight really can recognize when they've done something wrong and need forgiveness. And you can help your child at different points in times by looking at their behavior in the house and speaking to them about, well, see, this is the type of thing you might want to confess. Like when you punched your sister, when you didn't think I was looking, when you got the, took the iPad up to your room when I told you not to. See, in ways in pointing these things out, you help, you help your child with conscious development and understanding right from wrong, what one should do, what one shouldn't do. So in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, it is about developing a relationship to God in which we understand that we are called to act in the right way in how we treat each other, not to be selfish, not to be self-centered, not just to think about ourselves, but to remind ourselves that we belong to a community, we belong to a family, we go to a school, and so we have to have a good sense of relationship with the people that are around us by treating them with respect, and as the Lord tells us in the Gospel, to treat each other as we ourselves wish to be treated. And when we begin to point these things out, it helps our children examine their conscience and have a good understanding of what's right and what's wrong. Remember, your conscience is your inner moral self. It's there to guide you. And in order for our conscience to be truly fully developed, it needs to be educated. And so between the religious education and school program and your own influence on your children in the house, you will help them form a proper conscience by pointing things out of what should or shouldn't be done, how one should act, and how one should treat other people. And that's an important moment um, for your children uh, to learn things and also in your relationship to your children because now you're calling them as a member of the family to act in a responsible way. 
Remember, all morality is about acting in a responsible way and how we treat each other. And so that's part of the development um, of your child's morality um, through their religion program when they begin to see things and pull things together and understand where they fit in the family of God, in the family of the church, and what role they play and what they're called to do. In these areas of reconciliation, always remember that it is the moment in which we acknowledge before God that we know we could have done better and that we're asking God to forgive that, but we're also asking God to give us his strength, that grace that I spoke about, that allows us to move beyond that behavior and, and find that strength to know how to do the right thing and live the right way. Throughout the year, as we will continue to speak with you in different ways, we'll be talking about this with your children and we'll have time when they come into the church at different points in time to show them the confessional, to show them how things are done and what procedures will take place. Remember, reconciliation begins with the examination of conscience. You think about your sins, you prepare yourself and get ready to speak to the priest. You come in very simply by saying, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession. State your sins. The priest will ask you maybe a few questions and give a little bit of advice. Then he'll give you the penance. Then he'll give you the absolution. And you'll say the act of contrition and then move out and say your penance or do your penance. Now, for first reconciliation for all of the students, we will have the children read the act of contrition together prior to going into confession. This way, it's a little less pressure on them on the day of their first confession. Whenever you might have a question, um, please feel free um, to email me. I'll be very happy uh, to answer any uh, particular question that you might have, or you could reach out to your child's teacher or catechist, and we'll be very happy to arrange a lesson uh, so that they have a better understanding of this sacrament. I, I thank you for your time with us today, and I appreciate your sharing in this video, and I look forward to be seeing you again. Uh, thank you, and God bless.